Hey guys, it's Elizabeth Finding Elizabeth, and this is my week 100 and something post op vertical sleeve gastrectomy update. Um, it's my week seven where I'm gonna cry in a video. Hopefully, I'm not gonna cry. <laughs> but I've just even in talking about my weight, this is take five, and I've already started to cry. I don't know what the fuck is wrong with me. Um, anyway, the it's Monday, July 26, 2016. Um, first off, the title of this video is. Um, me being a little bit cynical, it sort of started as a joke. SJ was here this weekend, and we were talking about um, uh, clickbait titles for um, YouTube videos. And I said, well, regardless of what my talk is going to be this week, that's what I'm going to call. Um, that's what I'm going to title this video. But actually, I'm thinking about it a little bit. Uh, yesterday, I was like, you know, actually, I think I can make the connection to this. Sorry, my button came in, and I'll try not to flash anybody because I can't button it back with one hand. Anyway. Oh, my weight's pissing me off today. I usually don't let the scale bug me, but I'm, um, I don't know. I am just a big, hot mess, man. Um, my starting weight was 402 pounds in January of 2014. I had vertical sleeve gastrectomy on April 14th, 2014 at 360 pounds. Last week I was 199.6. Today I was 202 and it fucking pisses me off because I didn't, maybe that was like, maybe last week's weight was like an unnaturally low weight because I was at 202 the week before, but I really did not do anything that should have resulted in a two and a half pound gain. And like I said, I'm a daily weigher and I usually don't let the scale fuck with me, but everything's fucking me these days, I guess. I mean, but usually when I have a gain, I know why I had it. And the only thing I can think of is didn't drink all my water and you know typically um and I drank a bit of champagne this week but that doesn't usually mess with me this much so I don't know it is what it is but it really kind of upset me this morning um because I had really hoped that I would stay in Wonderland for at least two weeks so um hmm. uh fun parts of the week were that um, SJ came to visit. It was lovely to meet her and see her. Oh, she's gorgeous. I want her hair. Um, and we met up with Patty and Gracie. It was Gracie's birthday um, on Saturday, so it was lovely to see them. So we all had lunch, and then um, SJ came back to my place. We did a, a video on um, love and relationships, post-weight loss surgery. Part one's on my channel. Part two's on her channel. Um, and then we went out, um, to eat, came home, blah, blah, blah. So, what does this title, How Weight Loss Surgery Almost Killed Me, have to do with anything in my real life? So, this does not come as a huge surprise to anybody who watch, watches my videos, but I am a mess. A big, giant, hot mess these days. Um, and on a real roller coaster. I mean, the positive thing I have to say about this last week is that I cried fewer days than I didn't cry. So that's a plus. But, um, but you know, I think Saturday uh, when we went out to lunch, I was like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm okay. I pushed past my point with this stupid relationship stuff where it's not bothering me. I feel pretty good. I'm detaching. I sent all his stuff. I... Um, I think I'm ready to let it go. And Patty's like, well, just be prepared to go back and forth on this. And she is so right. So yesterday was a super bad day and I'm feeling like today might be too. <laughs> I need to figure out how to, how to um, jump my start out of it. But um, yesterday, basically, I um, sort of, I don't like ultimatums, but I sort of gave him an ultimatum of either um, we need to do this and have this conversation and whatever, or we need to cut off communication. So we didn't have the conversation, so I guess we're cutting off communication. So um, what, how it relates back to weight loss, weight loss surgery is this, and I don't know how I didn't realize this before, but um, Gracie got here early and we were at the restaurant for a while before everybody else got there and we were talking a lot about this, about how um, I know that 
I really felt for a good year and a half into this process, you know, people would talk about this weight loss surgery, mental mind fuck. I'm like, yeah, that's not happening to me. I'm, I feel good. I feel even I'm happier than I've ever been. Blah, blah, blah. And, you know, she had sort of said that as well, as had a lot of other people. And it seems to me that it's like kind of around the two year mark that, um, uh, that it stops being so much about. I don't know, I guess my theory with that I was telling Gracie was it's like at the two-year mark, even though I haven't reached my goal, I have for a year, I have been at a semi-normal weight and have been living my life that way. And so I think by like year two, um, you know, your whole world isn't revolving around weight loss surgery and what you ate. And you're starting to have to deal with, you know, the emotional issues that come up in life without food as a coping mechanism. And I do not know how this has slipped my mind through this whole process, but because um, I was saying, oh, you know, I'm so upset over this breakup because this is the first time I've broken up with anybody when I wasn't, you know, I didn't have a little kid at home, so I had to pull my shit together and um, be a mom. But what I realized yesterday and um, was, well, Gracie and I had talked about it on the weekend, but I really felt it yesterday, was... No, I mean, that may be part of it, but no, this is the first, um, this is the first, I mean, fuck me. Are you guys tired of me? I'm tired of me. Um, it's the first situation where I've been grieving something without having food to cope with. So that doesn't seem like this whole big aha moment. So that's where I say how weight loss surgery almost killed me. I spent my whole life. I spent, you know, from the littlest girl, I have all kinds of, I mean, we won't get into my therapy uh, diaries, but from my early, I mean, early, early, from like five on, I have huge abandonment issues with people leaving and, you know, people who are very important to me leaving and blah, 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 blah. And in thinking about this yesterday, uh, after my conversation with Gracie, I was like, yeah, every single, oh, I think Dale Cooper may be coming in to say hello. Hello, Dale. Hi. You want to say hi to the peoples? You want to say hi to the YouTube peoples? No. Okay. No. He just wants to walk on me. But, um, but even from the youngest age, whenever something would happen where I was grieving or mourning a loss of someone, um, food was my go-to. And so I started thinking, well, yeah, no, I mean, obviously I'm sort of using alcohol a little bit to cope, but it's a very different mechanism alcohol is to food. Um, for me, at least, alcohol exacerbates my emotions and makes me feel them a little more strongly, where food for my whole life has um, numbed me out. And... Um, Yesterday, I think because I basically put down that ultimatum of, you know, okay, no more communication. Because I, I mean, part of it being because I felt like I, <clears throat> I had to save face. I am, um, you know, a grown adult who um, shouldn't be taking up such shit and shouldn't be bending over so backwards. And one of the reasons I put this out so much on YouTube is because I want to be held accountable by people. And I want to know that there's all these people out there who... Um, for whatever reason, um, really respect me. And I was joking with Petty. It's like, I don't want to be Vicky from the Real Housewives of Orange County if you guys seen that and all her stupid shit she does with her boyfriend. And um, it's possible that, uh, that Brian's going to be here this weekend. And I wanted to, I felt like I needed to, kind of draw a line, line in the sand before that happened because if I was commun in communication with him when he was here, I would probably see him. So, so yesterday I was really upset and I was crying a lot and I was just like really, and I wasn't drinking and I wasn't eating and I, you know, and I just felt it. I mean, I felt such really deep sadness and um, and I was letting my, I mean, I was giving myself permission to feel it because I know the only way you can move through this stuff is to feel it. But, you know, I think so many of us who use food as a coping mechanism have um, not ever done that. I mean, that we've 
when those feelings started to come up, um, I can't make eye contact with the video either. <laughs> when those feelings started to come up, you know, it would be fast food runs or it would be Ben and Jerry's ice cream or, you know, I would, you know, go to the grocery store and buy all this food so that I could just, you know, eat it and zone off into the TV and not feel these feelings because I always felt that a lot of times in therapy they'll ask you, you know, if you really feel this, whatever this emotion is, what are you afraid is going to happen? And I remember one saying to my therapist, it's like, I, two things, either one, it's going to actually kill me or I'm never going to be able to come out of it. It's like if I go there, I can't, um, I won't be able to pull myself out of it. And, um, and so yesterday I just really tried to sit with it and feel it and allow myself to feel it. And for the first time ever, I realized, I almost Googled this because, because I was being still and crying and feeling what I was feeling. It was like, wow, you know, it literally does in my chest feel like my heart is breaking. Why is that? What's the, what's the physiological um, explanation behind that? I didn't end up Googling it, but I don't think I ever let myself really go into and feel sadness um, the way I did yesterday without trying to, um, as much as I could, run away from it. Because food's not an option anymore. Um, so that's why the how weight loss surgery almost killed me, because I thought if I ever really felt my feelings, that it would fucking kill me. And because I had weight loss surgery, um, that's what was happening to me yesterday. Um, but... Doesn't feel good, people. But um, anyway, so that's my weight loss surgery realization this week. And it seems like such an obvious one. Um, and I think in other ways, I've you know recognized emotional eating when something was going on, but it wasn't something that was this painful to me. Um, so I think maybe over these last few weeks because I haven't had food to use as an outlet you know I have um, really been feeling all this stuff and I think when you when you push stuff down for so many um, years that it's like not only You guys are so wonderful to put up with me. And hopefully there's going to come a point in the near future where I'm not going to cry on a YouTube video. But um, I think when you've stuffed everything down for so long that it's not only am I feeling this loss, but I'm feeling all those other losses as well. So that's where I'm at. And that's how weight loss surgery almost killed me because it forced me to actually feel my feelings. And you know what? Not such a huge fan of feeling all my feelings, but I know in the long run, <coughs> it's what I need to do to get to the other side, but I wish it would like hurry the fuck up. Anyway, you guys have a great week and I will talk to you later. And I think, um, I think if I can book a guest because I have had my head up my ass so far, I, we will actually have a Naked Truth show this Sunday. So anyway, you guys have a fabulous week. I love you all. Thank you for watching. Thank you for all your amazing support. I'm so behind on replying to comments and I'm so touched by all your comments that what happens is I will get in to start replying and then I'll get all emotionally verklempt and I'll have to walk away from it. So anyway, um, I never knew I would be so lucky to have as many wonderful friends as I do now. So thank you all and I'll talk to you next week. Bye.